The sandwich doesn't get the respect that it deserves. So obviously we're gonna make the greatest version, but with two extremely different price points. Right, so as I said, the French dip, it doesn't get a lot of love, but it is such a good sandwich. Roast beef, sometimes onions and cheese, stacked up tall, dipped in some umami rich, deeply flavored broth. Are you kidding me? How do I not hear people saying, that's my favorite sandwich. So we're making the best ultra traditional version, but then you know what, why not? Let's make a second one that is as expensive as we can make it and see if that really makes a difference. With all that being said, let's make this, shall we? We've got two beautiful and dipping mandatory sandwiches here. A more traditionalist meat cheese bun dip for sort of a common price region, around 10, 20 bucks a sandwich. And then we have our $400 sandwich A5 Wagyu Squilliam the Third Big Boy Fancy Pants version. Does this massive increase in expenditure equal a better French dip or will the humble beginnings version reign as champion? To begin, we'll start with our bread, which is consistent in both sandwiches. Sure, it's called a French dip. And it typically uses a baguette, but guess what? French dip is American, so that means I can do whatever the hell I want. So homemade shibata it is. And yes, this one is in grams. So if you're gonna do this, please do it right and don't be, oh my God, it's in grams, what am I gonna do? Shut up. Begin with 220 grams of lukewarm water around 90 degrees Fahrenheit and whisk in a heaping quarter teaspoon, which is just under one gram of instant yeast. Once dissolved, pour that into 220 grams of bread flour, mix together by hand until you have a smooth and very runny paste. Cover that with plastic wrap and let it rest at room temp for 12 to 18 hours. That's up. Uh, overnight. This is called a poolish, hence the uh, regal name I've given it. It's a pre ferment and no, you shan't skip it. Bada bing, bada boom, it's the next day, and whisk together 375 grams of bread flour and 12 grams of fine sea salt until combined. Separately, dissolve half a teaspoon or one gram of instant yeast in 257 grams of water around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Add your flour mixture to your stand mixer and begin mixing on medium-low speed. Add your yeasty water, followed by your poolish. Then just let that bad boy mix for about seven minutes, scraping the sides as necessary until it's roughly smooth. First thing I want to note is that this dough will be very loose and very sticky, so stay calm. The main thing you're looking for is smoothness and tension. It will get smoother and more like a dough as it rests. Now place it in a grease bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and do the following. Allow it to rest and rise at room temp for one hour, and then you're going to perform what's called a turn of the dough. Turn one. With damp hands, pick up an edge of the dough near the bowl, let it stretch as much as you can without tearing, fold it over itself, and repeat that stretch and fold all the way around the perimeter of the dough. Cover it and let it rest for 25 minutes. Turn number two. Do the same thing, fold and stretch the dough as such, all the way around, and rest another 25 minutes. Turn number three, being a little more gentle moving forward. Stretch and fold. After that, rest for 45 minutes, and you have a total of three turns. Generously flour a work surface, scrape your dough out of your bowl using a plastic dough scraper, being careful not to degas your dough too much. You should have a nice, jiggly, and taut dough. Generously flour the top of your dough, and very, very gently maneuver the dough into a rough rectangle without squishing it. Using your bench scraper, swiftly cut your dough into three long rectangles, starting at the longest end, doing your best to keep them as even as possible. Place those three rectangles on parchment slightly larger than the size of your loaves and cover those with an overturned container that does not allow the container to touch the dough. And let those proof at room temp for one hour. Now while that's proofing, add a baking steel or a baking stone to the middle of your oven and begin preheating to 475 Fahrenheit. And at the bottom of the oven, place a dry cast iron pan. Now once that's preheated for the full hour and your dough is proofed, it is time. Spray your loaves with water and baking no more than two loaves at a time, slide them into your oven onto your steel like this. You see how I finesse that f***er? Immediately spray your oven with water and add one cup of ice to your reaping hot pan. Place the violently steaming pan back in, close the oven, and allow it to steam for 15 to 18 minutes. Then remove your steamer pan and reduce the heat to 375 and bake for five to eight more minutes, or until a beautifully puffed and golden brown ciabatta sub sandwich bread emerges. Repeat that process with the remaining single piece of dough. And of course, if you want more, you can very easily double this recipe. But with that being said, these are so big that it definitely qualifies as a two-person sandwich. And all you have to do is let those cool to room temp. Next, we have our broth. Very simple. You'll need two and a half cups or six 600 milliliters of rich beef broth, which I actually enriched mine by searing a beef bone that I happen to have, don't ask, and simmered that into already prepared beef broth to fortify its beefy flavor even more. So now we're ready to actually make it. In a pot, heat two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter over medium heat till melted and boobling. Then add one sweet onion, cut into half inch thick slices, salt to taste, and a small pinch of sugar. Reduce the heat to medium low and saute that, stirring often for 20 to 30 minutes. You may have to add a little bit of water to loosen if it starts to get too dark of a fond at the bottom of the pan. And once you have a beautiful caramelized 
You're ready to then add your two and a half cups or 600 milliliters of your rich beef stock. Then you realize your pot is far too large. So you transfer it to something maybe a little more reasonable. Add a couple sprigs of thyme and let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Then add one and a half tablespoons or 20 grams of Worcestershire sauce and a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of shiradashi. Taste and adjust salt and pepper levels as needed. Shrink through a fine mesh sieve and you have your dip to your French. All right, we have our simple sandwich first, so let's make this quick. Look, you need two pounds of very thinly sliced beef. I don't care what you use, use something that you desire. I went with a ribeye steak cut very thinly because I happen to have this thick boy rib roast, so uh, of course, and I sliced it ultra, ultra thin, but you can use any other beef based off your budget and what you want it to taste like. Typically, you see roast beef here, so if you want to use my prime rib recipe, you can use that as well. That being said, once you have your sliced raw beef, pet yourself on the back, pal, because that's all. Here's how you cook it. Heat a large pan or a flat top over a medium high heat. Give it a like greasing with oil. I added beef fat that I rendered out from the side of my rib roast trimming. Then add a handful of sliced onion. This is obviously per sandwich, so of course you are going to need a whole thinly sliced onion. Season it with salt and hard sear that onion until you get some light charring and it begins to soften. Set that to the side and add a third of your beef. Season that with salt and pepper and let that sear for two minutes or until you get some nice color. Flip, sear another minute and give it some chopping with the spatula to get the meat a touch more fine and, you know, coax a little more fat rendering out of it. Once loosey, juicy, and goosey, toss that back together with your onion. Let it mingle for a few seconds. While that's happening, Slice the shibata loaf in half, push your beefiness to one side if you have room, and toast the bread in the juices and fat of the beef. Now, if you're using a pan, you can totally do this separately in a different pan with butter. So, you know, use your intuition here. Once you've toasted your buns, then shape your meat roughly into the dimensions of your bread. Add two to three slices of Swiss cheese to your beef and allow it to melt, or, you know, force it to with a torch. Hit your toasted buns with mayo, layer on your beefy, cheesy beauty. Grab the top bun and crown a fatty, juicy, glorious king. The sandwich may look simple, but it is mighty and powerful, or so I think. So let's give it a taste test and find out. Now, there's a lot of questions you might have. One, Josh, this is French dip, you put it on shibata. Two, this is not roast beef. And I would like to address those questions with two things. Number one, shut up. Number two, the French dip is an American invention. I can do whatever I want. Now let's eat this. A little dunk. This is so good. Kendra, do you know how to eat a French dip? You dip it. And it's a French dip, not just a dip. Oh, I'm sorry. You le dip it. This is so good. <laughs> the texture is great. This flavor is great. The juice. You know, the juice is leaking. If it doesn't make you leak, then you done screwed up, brother. A French dip has always been long forgotten and not given enough respect. But we're gonna take it up a notch and see if we spend a little more money, would it be any better? Right, on to our fancy boy version. Before we make our sandwich, let's make Parmigiano-Reggiano twills. Sounds fancy, it's really easy. Get a baking sheet with a sill pad on it, grate little mounds consisting of about two tablespoons of finely grated Parmigiano-Reggiano, and pop that into an oven that's been preheated to 400 Fahrenheit and baked for about three minutes or until melted and golden. Then just allow those to cool till crisp, and that's your twill. We have our bread and our broth already done, so let's just focus on the sandwich of gulls. Let's begin with our sauce, a horseradish truffle mayo. Mama. Start with one cup or 178 grams of mayo, a quarter cup or 55 grams of creme fraiche, two tablespoons or 40 grams of whole grain mustard, two cloves of garlic, fresh grated, a heaping tablespoon or 20 grams of fresh grated horseradish, and one whole ounce or 28 grams of fresh grated black winter truffle, which hilariously is actually this entire truffle. Nice work. Season that with salt and pepper and mix until thoroughly combined. I mean, just visually, this is a beautiful sandwich sauce, which yields the power to belong to any sandwich. Next, gremolata. Very simple. Generous handful of fresh parsley, finely chopped, and two cloves of garlic, finely chopped, the zest of one lemon, and tossed together, and you have a fragrant herbaceous trip better than smelling fresh laundry, as long as you didn't poop in the laundry. For your beef, you'll need a whole A5 ribeye or strip loin that's about 12 to 14 ounces. Trim off any excess fat, cut it into your desired shape, then heat a dry stainless pan over medium high, season your A5 heavily with salt and pepper, add it to your pan, and sear for two minutes. As we know, A5 will render its own fat out, which we appreciate. Flip to reveal a sear that will surely cause a tear or two, and possibly a good old-fashioned buzz, and sear for one to two more minutes. Remove from the pan and rest for five minutes minutes. Then get your sharpest knife, slice into quarter inch thick slices that are even. I mean, for real, I'm tired of seeing all your uneven sliced steaks. Keep it even, especially if you're going to ball out and drop 250 on a steak. Now on to assembly, which is equally as easy as before. Generously truffle mayo your toasted buns. We always toast here. Layer on some very thinly sliced fresh onion. Gently and nicely layer on your whole steak, dribbly and moist as it is. Hit it with your gremolata generously. Gently add on your Parmigiano Reggiano twills. And finally, crown your undeniably luxurious, audacious sandwich. Cut it in half, of course on our bias, to reveal a cross section that makes me blush just a little. And get ready to dip and put something that costs a lot of money gently and lovingly into your mouth. Now let's see if, uh, well, that 400 or so dollars was worth it. This is an A5 Wagyu sandwich with a black truffle mayo. 
Honestly, everything about this sandwich is righteous. It's got the crunch on the outside, but the inside just so aerated and soft and beautiful and luscious. And the Parmesan twill actually comes through. You can taste the Parmigiano. But what I've realized is it's actually this jus that makes this entire thing. Mmm, mm, it's very different. It feels like a more upscale version. Bye, Kendrick. <laughs> this is a very good French dip. It goes to show that it comes down to the heart of a French dip, the jus. So is one better than the other? I think these are equally as good. Would I pay this much for this sandwich? Actually, yes, I would, which makes me feel stupid because I paid that much for that sandwich. Money doesn't always correlate to a great time. The choice is yours. Da -da -da -da. Take that to heart. Don't buy stuff to make you happy. You wanna know what else is full of meat, juice, and drips? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our two different French dips. They both came out splendid, if I do say so myself. Was one better than the other? It's hard to say. I feel like I gravitate a little bit towards the more traditional version because it's a little less chaotic, but I really enjoyed the eating experience of these two sandwiches almost equally. That makes that $400 price point not really worth it at all. But, and I say this with a heavy, big, juicy butt, the experience of the Wagyu version was a little bit more exotic. It felt a little bit more fancy. But if I enjoyed it the same, then probably we're gonna wanna vote for that traditional sandwich. But hey, if you got some extra cash you want to throw out a window and give it a little try, have a little A5 sandwich, knock yourself out because it's going to be delicious either way. And that is the beauty of a French dip. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Da -da -da -da.